Hey, what's up? Hey, I'm Video Bob, and I want to introduce you to the biggest SUV ever made, the Ford Excursion. Well, hot diggity dog, I got myself a truck. Actually, this is my first truck. Uh, the truck that I've been driving for the last couple of years has been uh, this Dodge Dually over here. That's a 98 3500 Dodge Ram. It's got the 24 valve Cummins turbo diesel in it, which has quite the cult following. But another truck that has a huge cult following is the Ford Excursion with the 7.3 liter turbo diesel engine in it. A legendary engine that they used in school buses and heavy equipment. And then they put it into this thing, the biggest SUV ever built. The Ford Excursion is basically a Ford F-250 pickup truck that they kind of put an expedition rear end on and kind of made their own version of a Suburban and made the biggest, widest, tallest, longest SUV ever built. They didn't build it for very long. They only built it for a couple of years. I think about like it was a five year run and they only made about maybe less than 200,000 of these. And they came with a couple of different engine options. We're not gonna go through all of those. We're not gonna do a full review of the entire history of the truck, but they came with either a, a, a small V8 motor, you could get a V10 gas motor. They also had a uh, six liter diesel motor that came after this one. A lot of people say not to get that one, even though it has more power. What people want is the old school, rattly, rumbly 7.3 turbo diesel that's in this thing. It's loud, but it's proud. They literally run forever. I've seen these trucks with over half a million miles on them all the time. This one has 230,000 miles on it. And I know you're looking at it thinking, this doesn't look like a 2003 truck to me. Well, let me explain a couple of things. I don't know you're looking at this thing, and for those of you that know Ford trucks, you're thinking, this is not the front end of a 2003. It isn't. This is the front end of a 2016 Super Duty. Now, there are people out there who are obsessed with these Ford trucks, and what they like to do is update them. And you can literally change out the whole front clip of this thing. You have to cut into the frame and into the bumper, and it's not just a bolt-on job. It's a lot of work, but that's what's been done here. The fenders, the hood, this grill, the bumper, the bracketry that holds it, uh, and the, the adjusted cowling and, and the mirrors, that's all been changed to look like a much newer truck, including these aftermarket headlights with the halos in them that glow real cool. And it looks like a, 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 almost a brand new F-250, F-350 truck, but really it's a 2003. Back into this thing is all excursion. Now, I'm not 100% sure. I think this bumper may have been changed out I can't say for sure, but I know that the taillights have been changed out. Uh, I, I believe it shares the same taillights as Ford vans. That's what I was told. But these are an aftermarket LED. They look real cool. They're smoked out. Gives a little bit more of a modern look to the thing. Uh, of course, I like the two-tone paint. When I came home with this thing, my friends were like, man, you got that thing done fast. I'm like, what do you mean you got it done? They go, what, the paint? And I'm like, no, it came like this. They're like, what? And I'm like, no, seriously. I was looking through like Marketplace and Craigslist. I saw this thing for sale with the Rockstar black wheels and the red and black two-tone paint. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the truck for me. It came like this. I swear to God. There are a few things I need to address. This panel has fallen off. You can see there's a trim panel here with chrome and this one's come off. I actually have the panel, but it's damaged. It needs to be completely refinished, repainted and stuck back on. Obviously this was an all black truck that they painted the extra red on when they did this conversion. They also added these cool mirrors. You can extend them for trailer towing. They've got the blinkers in them. Fantastic looking vehicle. I, I, I know people think that the Rockstar wheels are a little played out. I like them. <laughs> Same ones I put on my Dodge truck. I think they're cool. I don't hate them. Uh, but I do plan on adjusting these wheels a bit. I don't, you know, this is the 4x4 version. I'm sorry I didn't mention that before. It's 4x4 version. I'll probably never use the 4x4 version, uh, certain, you know, utility of it. I, I'll never take this thing off-road. 
I'm not really crazy about these thick, knobby off-road tires. They make a lot of noise and make it ride rough. There's also a two inch offset, which I don't need. So my plan is to take these tires off, put on regular street tires. I'd like to lower the thing a little bit and I'd like to uh, bring the wheels back into their normal position instead of sticking way out like this. Yeah, I'm not really into this whole lifted truck thing. That's never been my bag. You've seen the cars I like to drive. I, I, I'm not into this, uh, whatever this is called, this redneck thing, this uh, yeet, yeet, dilly, dilly. All right, starting at the back of this thing, you've got like a three door hatch. You got this that opens and you can access just grocery getting. You got this little barn door situation that opens up. And uh, this guy has put himself, uh, the guy I bought it from, and put in this big subwoofer thing that's going away. Cool thing about these doors is you can have them in this position or you can uh, really, take this little latch off here. Let me, hold on a second. It's always supposed to be easy till you're on camera. Okay, let me try this one. Really? There we go. Jesus, okay. I got this black crap all over my hands, thanks. Anyway, you can open the door all the way. Do I need to do that? No. Jesus. Okay. Full spare tire. I don't even know what's under here. I don't think there's anything under here. There's some tie downs, carpet. Now, seats fold down for tons of storage. You have all the same space that you would have, if not more, that you would have in the bed of a truck, except it's air conditioned and carpeted. Not crazy about the colors that Ford uses. It's beige. But you can fit three reasonably sized pot belly Texans back here. And if there's just two of you, got this nice little thing with two cup holders in it. Not enough cup holders, two more there. There is four cup holders for the potentially two people that are gonna be back here. Each person has their own little air conditioning vent on the roof with their own controls back here. How cool is that? You can get air from not only up top, but on the bottom. Over here, you have this little console where you can plug in headphones and, and listen and a cigarette lighter. You got little, some pockets here. I mean, look, it's no Rolls Royce, but this ain't bad. Now, if you still have too many big pot belly bubbas with you, or you got a bunch of kids, you got the seats up front, you get the seats here. There's an entire set of seats behind this set of seats. These fold up. Let's see, how does this go? This just pulls forward. These fold down. Then this goes flat. You gotta take this little headrest off. But just to access the back seat, you can fold this forward. And back here, you could sit three more people. I mean, seriously, look at this. Wait, this goes this way, okay. And this flaps up. Yeah, there's a lot of room back here. I mean, I may not be any Doug DeMuro, but I'm 6'2", 240 pounds. And I fit back here pretty comfortably. There's a lot of room back here. If I can pull this forward. There we go. Yeah, man, I mean, uh, there, there is full room back here. And I have my own little air conditioning vent right on my head. It also comes out of the floor. And, and I could fit my chick right here with me, you know? So you could fit three full-size adults. There's also cup holders for everybody. Everybody in America gets a cup holder. That's the law. Cup holder over there with a little storage compartment. Cup holder right here. Cup holders. So guaranteed, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people riding in this big SUV. Each person has their very own air conditioner, their very own dome light, and their very own cup holder. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cup holders. Am I missing some? There might be more. There's not even that many people in here. Well, sometimes you need two drinks. All right, let's talk about these covers. I see this as a big problem with almost all of the excursions. These panels, which are very sturdy, by the way, 
I mean, these are hinged on, they're like metal. And they're just supposed to be held in with Velcro. This was Ford's design, literally. And they're always broke, right? So I see people making videos on how to put screw snaps, magnets, and all kinds of other uh, enclosures on here. But basically what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to take off this headrest. This lies flat. This goes down and then connects to there. And then the other seat, you know, it comes out or it folds down or whatever it does. And then you can make like a full-blown uh, bed here that's the length of a full pickup truck. I'm not going to demonstrate it. You can imagine what it's like. Uh, but uh, if you don't have extra people to carry around, there's really no need to have this extra set of seats back here. I will probably end up taking the extra set of seats out. And I will probably end up having this lay down all the time because I plan to use this for towing a vehicle and for storing different things. As you know, I tour the country and we show our show cars. And normally I take our tour bus on those trips, but there are times that you don't want to take the tour bus uh, simply because it's just too big a hassle and you need something like this. Now this thing is almost 20 years old, not quite, but it's in pretty good shape. It just needs a little TLC here and there. Not a big deal. All right, these things came in a couple of different trim patterns. This one is the Limited. The Limited has all the extra leather and the wood trim, fake wood trim. I'm pretty spoiled because I've been driving my Rolls Royce around for the last year. And when you get into a plastic car like this and you start to appreciate a fine automobile, this thing isn't bad though. I mean, look, it's a truck. Now, some people buy trucks as luxury vehicles. Other people buy them as the tools that they are. And this thing came from an era before things like backup cameras, GPSs, things like that were standard in vehicles. Uh, but those things can easily be added. We will be adding a rear camera system to this thing. It's got a pretty kick-ass Kenwood radio system in here that supports video and, and all that kind of cool stuff. So it, it has everything I need in it. You have this upper console. The upper console has these couple of... Uh, little doors up here. This one is meant to hold a sunglasses and it's always broken in just about every truck. I'm going to try to fix that. This one just has like an empty spot where you're supposed to put like a, it's supposed to be a garage door opener, but there's a garage door opener actually built into the mirror right here. There's a home link button, but I couldn't seem to get it to program and work. So I had to put my other one in. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong, but I need to figure it out. And up here, you've got like a little computer that shows you your trip mode and your temperature and things. And uh, then you have your rear air conditioning uh, that you can control here. But it's got different settings. If you set it to rear, the people in the rear can control it, or you can override it here, or you can have it off. It's just the way it's set up. Over here on this panel, you have your two-wheel drive, 4x4 four four high, 4x4 four four low. I think it's supposed to work by vacuum uh, that controls the hubs. For those of you out there that are experts in these, Tell me all about it in the comments. I'm still learning. You also have a rear defrost button and a parking sensors on and off button. There are ultrasonic parking sensors on the bumper that just go beep, beep, beep when you're about to run over something. There's also a little control here for adjusting the foot pedals forward and back. You know, the thing about trucks like this is a lot of short guys with very small genitalia, they like to drive big trucks, makes them feel good. So they knew they had to accommodate for that. So they made it so that the pedals could come up and meet their lifted cowboy boots. Anyway, on the steering wheel, oh my gosh, there's so many controls. Resume, Excel, Coast, on and off, uh, stereo controls, next, mode, volume. But here's something I've never seen before on a steering wheel. Controls for the temperature and the fan. Do I really need that? Do I really need to adjust my temperature and fan? There's way too many buttons on the steering wheel. All right, cup holders. Two cup holders here. Not enough for you. Here's two more. How many drinks do I need? The people who drive these trucks must be really thirsty. I was trying to figure out what this is. This is like a, it's made to hold a trash bag because well, clearly, 
you're eating in this thing a lot. You have drinks. There's a clip here. A clip. You can clip paper here. Okay. Huge cavernous uh, interior. I mean, you could you could fit a lot of guns, gold and glory in here. There's a lot of America inside this. You can fit like, I don't know how many rolls of Charmin in here. Mirror has auto dimming controls. Over here is a, a little PowerPoint with a little door, a little roll up door. So you can hide your PowerPoint. Don't be gauche, hide your PowerPoint. I've placed this little magnet here to hold my phone. So I put my little phone there. Somebody else had put this bracket here to hold, I guess, a phone or some other thing. I'm gonna have this taken out. Lots and lots of seat settings. Seat heater. I don't even know what all these settings do. They go up and down, they move this way, that way, forward, back. And then you can set one or two different settings over here for remembering the one, your seat settings. Tons of controls on the door. All your windows, your mirrors, your window locks, child safety lock, just lots of stuff going on over here. There is one cool little party trick this thing does that I think is only on the premium versions of the vehicle when you turn it on. You can operate these vent buttons and they open up the rear windows out. Check this out. That's pretty cool. All right, you've been waiting long enough. You wanna know what this thing sounds like. Well, let's start it up. If you were hoping to go for a little ride and have a quiet conversation, you were wrong. You're not going to be able to hear anything except the sound of this motor, the sound of these tires, the sound of the wind, and the horrifying screams of the people that you're driving over. Well, there it is. All 7.3 liters of it. Just power stroking away. Apparently there's this little controller on the dash here, gives me some gauges and uh, some tuning. Maybe some of you out there who know what this thing is can tell me more about it because I honestly have no paperwork on it. I have no idea what it's doing, but it's here. Plugged into my OBD2. Uh, it's got a pretty cool Clifford Viper remote control system that's been added aftermarket. I don't know if these came with a remote lock, but this one works like up to a mile away and you got to charge it with a little USB cable. It's a pretty good system. It's got feedback where it actually vibrates. I really like it. Let me ask you, does size really matter? Does anybody need a vehicle this big? Does it make you feel like a man? Do you feel like a big man driving this truck? Yes, yes I do. But here's the really funny thing. This excursion is the biggest SUV ever made. It's like 19 feet long. And crazy enough, my Rolls Royce Phantom is still longer. Wow, it's longer. When I made my videos about my Rolls Royce Phantom and people would see me standing in front of the car. They go, what are you, some kind of tiny man? I'm 6'2". I weigh 240 pounds. I'm huge. These vehicles are gigantic. The Phantom is 19 and a half feet long. It's almost a half feet longer 
than the Ford Excursion, the biggest SUV ever made. Until you see them side by side, it's really hard to grasp how big this car is. Now, we're not talking about the Phantom today, but just to put things in perspective. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to C block the Excursion video with the Rolls Royce, but I think it's an interesting size comparison when you see how big this car is. But this is the biggest SUV ever produced in America. What's wrong with me? Why do I drive this? Do I have something to prove? Or maybe I just like big vehicles. I don't know. Okay, so what do these things cost? I've seen Ford Excursions for as cheap as like 2,500, four or 5,000 bucks, but those are gonna be the gas versions. 5.4 liter V8, the V10. Those are available pretty cheap. A really prime example, low mileage of the 7.3, you could spend 20, $30,000 on it. This one being a 2003 with the front end conversion, custom wheels, custom paint with 230,000 miles, I paid 15,000 for the truck. Some people say that I paid too much. Some people think I got a great deal. Just depends on who you are. Um, I feel like I got a good deal for the truck because it's in relatively good condition. The interior's in good condition. One of the seats has been replaced. Uh, the leather in these trucks generally torn out, as is the steering wheel. Uh, it's been repainted. I do like the wheels. Of course I love the paint scheme. And that front end, oh my God, that's sexy. I've seen hundreds of videos on how to do the front end conversion of these things. I think you could buy all the parts for like 2,500, 3,000 bucks, but then you gotta paint it. It is not a walk in the park. It's not a bolt-on. You have to cut out parts of the frame and behind the window buckets, you have to make all kinds of adjustments to buy a custom uh, bracketry. And of course, all the parts. It's an awful lot of work, but the payoff is fantastic. People come up to me all the time when I'm in this, and they go, wow, what kind of a truck? What is, is the, is the, are they making excursions again? This thing, what is this? This thing is amazing. And it looks fantastic. And I've seen that you can even do a dash conversion. You can even put a new modern dash in the truck. Now I've seen some other companies that what they're doing is they're taking basically brand new trucks and taking old excursions, cutting them in half, welding the excursion onto the back, making six door dually excursions. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Ford, what are you doing? Start making this thing again. Don't be stupid. So you want to know what it's like to ride in this thing? I use a seatbelt extender so I don't have to go down in there. I don't fat. All right. Let's turn the air on with the fan low so it doesn't make too much noise. Too much noise. <laughs> uh, that cracked me up. All right. Let's back this behemoth up, which I'm used to doing, and my Rolls Royce. Lots of visibility, actually. You've got plenty, plenty of room to see out the back. The truck makes a lot of noise. Now, granted, this thing's lifted. It's got two-inch wheel spacers on it. And it's got these big knobby tires, and I expect it to make some noise. Now, something that people talk about in these trucks all the time is that the steering is a little bit wishy-washy. I will admit, it seems to float a bit. But at least it's not all bouncy-wouncy like my Dodge. That thing's got tight steering, but you're hanging on for dear life. This thing is soft. I'm going to use my steering wheel to turn up the fan. Ah, isn't that nice? It's great for a big family if you got a bumper pull, like an Airstream, because it's got all the power you need. It's got the weight to keep your trailer under control, which a lot of smaller trucks don't. And you can carry all the people with you and all the stuff that you need. So I'll just blast it past that Dodge. 
the the low end pull and torque of these trucks is amazing it's like a freight train it just keeps going and going it doesn't seem to ever end If you're in the left lane and you're not passing people, you're in the wrong lane. Yeet, yeet, dilly, dilly. <laughs> Zero to 60 in the Ford Excursion is, yes, uh, getting smiles per gallon. You know, I make fun of the miles per gallon in this truck, but what's funny is I've had this thing for like a month and I bought it from the guy and it had about three quarters of a tank. And it's got about a half a tank, a little or less. And uh, honestly, I, I haven't filled it up yet. I don't know how big the tank is, but it seems to be doing great. Computer says I've still got 286 miles to go. So uh, I got the idea that you could go on a pretty long range trip in this thing. By comparison, I recently went on a trip from Dallas to Tulsa and back in my Rolls Royce in the Phantom. I went all the way there and back, almost 500 miles, and I got 18.75 miles per gallon. So that's a vehicle that's longer than this, weighs about as much, and has a V12 gas motor. So it would reason that a vehicle of this size should get reasonably good gas mileage. I'll find out. And the only way to really test it out is to go on a long range trip. So next time I'm gonna go on a long range trip, I'm gonna fill it up, take it easy see how it do. I gotta say, I do like the option of using the automated 4x4. I've seen these guys, I've, I've looked upon them jealously, as they've been stuck in a traffic jam, and I'm sure they've done this out where you live, but they do it in Texas all the time. They kick in their four-wheel drive or whatever, and they got their big dilly-dilly truck, and they just take a right, and they just drive right up the grass, up the embankment, onto the side road, and maybe through a farm or whatever's in the way, and they're out of there. And uh, I love it because <laughs> the only thing stopping me from going is these cars in the way. I don't care about these painted lines on the road and these signs and these laws of yours. If I can go, I'm going. That's just how I roll and that's how we do it in Texas. And now I understand why these guys have these big trucks because it's not a problem to hop a curb in this thing. Not a problem at all. Well, what I can tell you is this big behemoth is gonna fulfill all of my needs for towing trailers and hauling cars. It's what we do here, Bob's Prop Shop. We build custom cars. We build replicas of the Back to the Future car, the DeLorean time machine, uh, the Blues Brothers car, Knight Rider, and we're also doing a Ghostbuster car. You know, that Ghostbuster car is like 22 feet long, weighs 7,000 pounds. I need something big to move it around. And this was the thing that I needed. You know, my dually truck is a great truck. I love my truck, but I gotta be honest, it's not very comfortable to drive around in. It's kind of bouncy like this, you know. And you can't fit that many people in it, you can't fit that much secure stuff in it. The Excursion really is the best thing I've ever found, and they only made them for five years. They're getting harder and harder to find, and I've always wanted one, and now I have one. Now, I don't really do endorsements, really on the page, not yet anyway. My page has grown by like 50,000 subscribers in the last year, it's amazing, so thank you so very much. But I did wanna point out a couple of things that I bought for the truck right off the bat that I just wanted to share. Again, not a product endorsement, I bought these things myself, but I think they're pretty awesome. Check this out. I've always been a fan of these two product, products here. We got the B&W tow and stow receiver hitch. I put these on all of my vehicles, it's on my bus and everything else. Yes, they're a little expensive, but it is the last receiver you'll ever buy because you can rotate this and you got every size of ball that you need. You can adjust the height. They come in different lengths as well. And you can take these pins out and flip this thing around and hide it up under there if you want. And it's, it's just, it's a great hitch. But because it's expensive, you want to secure it with a locking pin. Now this is called the bolt. And what's cool about it is you buy the one that's specific for your vehicle, mine being a Ford, and it keys to your car key. So check this out. You turn it, you have to hold it. There we go. And it keys to your car key. 
when you put it in, it automatically locks to your car key, and that's how it works. And that way you don't have to, you never lose the keys to it because it's just your car key, and it's secure, and it keeps someone from running away with your BMW hitch. Highly recommend it. I will put links in my video description for these if you want to buy them. This is a little bonus footage for the people who like to hang around after the video. So the video I posted a little bit ago about safe flight, auto glass screwing me over with the window. Let me, let me finish up on that story. So what happened is there was some cracks and pits and stuff in the window. I decided to just go ahead and replace it. I called soft, safe flight auto glass using their website and the VIN number of the truck for a 2003 excursion. Guy came out with the windshield and said, oh, we brought the wrong windshield. This is a super duty. I said, this is not a super duty. I just put a super duty grill on the truck. This is a 2003 excursion. He goes, well, the windshield we brought is not the right windshield for your truck. It's supposed to have an acoustic windshield, whatever that means. And he goes, I'll have to come back tomorrow. They send a different guy out tomorrow. He comes out, cuts out the window, trashes it. I'm not even here, by the way. He calls me and says, I'm sorry, but we can't put the window back in the truck because there's some rust around the frame. Hey, what are you talking about? He goes, well, we cut out your window. And also he cut my security wires and claims he didn't. And he goes, yeah, we're leaving. I go, uh, no, you, you can't leave my truck sitting in the parking lot out in the open where it's going to rain with no windshield in it. Like that's not acceptable. He goes, well, there's a little rust around it. So I looked and there was some surface rust on the outside of the seal. And I said, look, bro, all I got to do is take a little wire brush, clean up around this area. I'll put a little rust preventative on it. It'll take us five minutes. We'll do it. He goes, nah, I've already sent pictures to my supervisor, Sergio. Sergio says that we're not going to put the windshield in. I call Sergio. I said, Sergio, I'd like to talk to you about this. Let me send you some pictures. I can clean this up. He goes, now nah, we've already denied it. I said, let me talk to your supervisor. He said, I can't do that. I said, well, what's your last name? He said, I'm not going to give you my last name. He hung up on me. So that's Sergio at Safe Flight Auto Glass in Arlington, Texas. Somebody watching this who's a supervisor, please do something about this guy. Fire him. And also the dude who came out, fire him also. So here's the deal. Uh, the guy left the windshield and the glue and he goes, I'm not putting it in, you put it in. Left. <laughs> I called my boy uh, Christian Martinez. He's a, my bus mechanic. He was coming over here to pick up my Sprinter van to do some work on it. He goes, man, I can put this window in for you. We got up on there with a ladder. We took a, uh, our little drill with a little wire brush thing. We cleaned up around it. We brushed on rust preventative, preventative paint. We uh, caulked the whole thing, put the window in ourselves. Ta-da, it's fine. But I had to do all the work myself. I had to pay another guy to come out and do it. And I'm expecting Safe Flight to refund me on this job, at least for the labor that they charged me for and didn't do. But quite frankly, they should just comp me the whole windshield for the way they treated me, making me have to call another company. So the bottom line is, there are some people that are making comments saying, well, they do have this rust policy and this and that. They really should check for that before they take your windshield out. And they really should have at least uh, something in place where they say, well, we can, we can fix this for you for an additional charge or whatever. But they can't just leave your truck, your car, your whatever, sitting in a parking lot with no windshield. I mean, imagine if this was, you know, at an office somewhere and, and they had come out to do it on site and they're just going to leave your car with no windshield and go, yeah, just drive that home, sucker. He didn't even offer to put the other windshield that he broke back in, right? So my recommendation is, please do not use Safe Light Auto Glass. Just don't call them. I've called them before and I had problems with them. And you know what? I guess I forgot because every single time I've called them and have them come out, there's always a problem. They've either always brought out the wrong windshield or they tell me they don't have the gasket and they got to get it the next day. There's always a problem. You know, there's always some problem. I've always had a problem with them. And I know the problem is that there's all these policies, there's all this litigious stuff going on, people suing over windshields and things, but it was a real hassle. The issue here is when you're dealing with a company like SafeLight that has all their policies, they may just leave you high and dry or actually low and wet in the parking lot. So deal with a local glass guy, a guy that's willing to, if there is a problem, fix the problem. He's not going to just leave you there with no windshield. He's going to take care of it for you because a competent real glass guy would have just said, hey, this is no big deal. Let's clean up this little rust area here. It's not like there was rust like with holes in it. It was just like surface rust, like bubbling paint, okay? Truck is, what, 18 years old? So we cleaned it up in literally five minutes and we put the windshield in and the windshield's fine and it looks fine. It's fine. 
okay? Safe flight, you left me stranded. I'll never call you again. I'll never recommend you again. And uh, I hope everybody sees this video. Please never call these people. Uh, I, I don't like being treated that way. I'll never recommend them. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I'm out.